All right, Ukrainians attack deeper and deeper inside Crimean Peninsula, allegedly testing air defense systems of Russians for an upcoming liberation of Crimea, which, by the way, is being discussed right now by the highest government and military officials of Ukraine. In addition to that, the remaining Russians are trapped in Kherson region with literally just one way to go. And you know what? Even the mother nature itself is against Russian occupiers. But more about all of this in a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude, and let's get straight to the point. As you can see from this video, which came to us from Yevpatoria, Crimea, Russian air defense system intercepted something, which allegedly was Ukrainian drone. In addition to that, Russians intercepted several other aerial objects in Sivastopol. And besides missiles that Russians were using to intercept Ukrainian drones, as you can see from this video, they were also using anti-aircraft guns. And as you can see, uh, these attacks go deeper and deeper inside the peninsula. At this very moment, you might have a question in your mind. Why would Ukrainians waste its drones for this? And the answer is pretty simple. Just like mentioned previously, they are trying to find weak spots in the air defense of Russians for an upcoming liberation of Crimea. Which is confirmed by the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Alexei Danilov, who is saying that right at this very moment, the highest government and military officials of Ukraine are discussing the tactics and strategies how they can return the peninsula. And before I tell you how the mother nature itself is protecting against Russian occupiers, here are just a couple more words about Crimean Peninsula. First of all, right here you can see the satellite image of the Russian air base in Nova Fedorovka before the attacks last week. And right here is the satellite image after the attack. According to the Western intelligence, more than half of Russian warplanes, which were used in the Black Sea, were severely damaged in this attack. And right now, instead of thinking how they can prevent this in the future, they're looking for someone to blame. And right here, for example, is another satellite image of Russian airbase in Jankoi, which was attacked more recently. And in this satellite image, which was taken after the attack, you can see that the majority of Russian military vehicles, planes and ammunition was all also destroyed. It has also been reported that according to the mayor of Melitopol, Ivan Fedorov, Russians prohibited Ukrainians from entering the Crimean Peninsula, which is simply the confirmation that they acknowledge their inferiority and they are afraid that Ukrainians will destroy even more military objects. Ok, and here as promised is the fight of the mother nature against Russian occupiers. In this video, which came to us from Nova Azorne, we can see a relatively big turn NATO destroying Russian constructions. Alright, and before we talk about very important updates from the East, let me quickly share with you my assumptions why I think that the remaining Russians are basically trapped in Kherson region. So, it all started with this relocation of Russian forces from the East to the South approximately several weeks ago. And if you remember, already at that time I was mentioning that uh, this is a pretty stupid idea. First of all, because Russia was already struggling in the east and second, because the superiority of Ukrainians in the south was unquestionable. And so, by splitting their forces, Russia left east less defended and they were not able to accomplish anything in the south. And then, if you remember, in the beginning of this week, Russian officers started to evacuate to the south of Dnipro river. But anyways, the remaining Russian soldiers in this region, they are basically trapped. Because first of all, they definitely have no more capability to attack Kherson. And at the same time, they cannot retreat through Crimea because this peninsula is being under constant attacks by Ukrainians. So the only thing left for them to do is to return where they came from. But those Ukrainians who remained in the east, they had some time to catch their breath. And as a result of this, they are able to meet all these retreating Russian soldiers with their full force. So as you can see, Russians in Kherson, they can no longer attack, they definitely have no opportunities to retreat, which basically leaves them with no 
options. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about the devastating dead situation for Russians in the East. And while I'm doing this, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. First of all, according to the Russian infiltrator in Donetsk region, Denis Pushilin, they will only do separation referendums as soon as Russia can liberate the entire region. But as you can see, there is still lots of territory to cover and Russians are basically not advancing anymore. It has even been reported that for the last couple of days, Russians were not able to advance even one single meter. Which basically means that the dream of Denis Pushilin about liberating the entire Donetsk region will most likely never come true. In several seconds I'll be talking about another airport that Russians are building on the territory of Belarus so that it is easier for them to invade Ukraine from the north. But first of all, let me show you really quick some videos from Kharkov. As you can see from this video, Russians were attacking this city once again. And as a result of these attacks, a civilian building has been destroyed. In response to that, as you can see from this picture, Ukrainians attacked another military object of Russians in Belgrade and most likely this was a military warehouse. And by the way, if you want to see more footage like this, especially the one which I was not able to use in today's episode, please consider checking my Patreon. All proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all the useful links down below. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about another airport that Russians are building on the territory of Belarus. This airport is to be located in this small city of Luminitz and as you can see, it is approximately only 30 miles away from the border with Ukraine. As you can see from this satellite image, Russians started to clear out the forest and bring communication equipment. And if this new airbase is to be completed, this potentially opens Russians new directions to attack, such as for example the city of Lviv. And to sum up everything, let's briefly talk about some very good news. Alright, so first of all, after yesterday's Zelensky, Erdogan and Guterres meeting, the president of Turkey, Rajab Erdogan, has finally decided to select one side. And according to him, from now on, Turkey will be supporting Ukraine. In addition to that, Rajab Erdogan suggested that if President Zelensky and President Putin want to talk, they can do it in Turkey. Most likely this will not happen, but at the same time we have another potential date when presidents of Russia and Ukraine can meet. And this can theoretically happen during G20 summit in Indonesia in the middle of this November. And finally, the president of the US, Joe Biden, has signed another $775 million military support package to Ukraine. This package will include additional HIMARS missiles and hopefully this will be extended range missiles. And the biggest game changer about this package is that Ukraine will receive weapons which will allow them to destroy Russian air defense systems and radars, which is a crucial step before they can fully liberate Crimea and destroy the breach. Welcome to another episode of Ridiculous Russian Propaganda. And today we have these stickers which were spotted in Moscow subway. On the left side of this heart is the symbol of Lugansk region and on the right side is the symbol of Donetsk region. And the main idea is that as soon as the doors close, Lugansk and Donetsk, they reunite with Russia. But the funniest part about this is that do you think designers thought what will happen when these doors open? And I mean it just has to be either one of the biggest fails in designer world or it is just the biggest troll by the government contractor. And if you want to see a video of these doors opening and it is pretty funny, feel free to join my discord. And if you want to support my work, please consider becoming my channel member. Thank you so much for your attention, stay safe and see you on Monday.